Hello everyone, welcome to Ask Kerry the Kind of Finder. Today, we're going to talk about the book that demonstrates a unique style of doing business, The Chartered Vendor Book. The book that also shares the life of the author from birth to youth to adulthood. And with us here is Mr. Jerry. Welcome, Mr. Jerry. Welcome, Mr. Jerry. I'm good, sir. I'm fine. Okay, Mr. Jerry. So what motivated you to write The Chartered Vendor Book? Okay, it was uh, because uh, I noticed what was happening in Zimbabwe. You know, our economy, we are living in an economy which is a better, a difficult environment. Mm -hmm. And noticing many people, they complain, many people, they give fault, many people, they blame. So I say to myself, how can I change mindset of the youth? Mm -hmm. How can I change mindset of the people in business? I can, how can I also uh, make a change and make an impact mm -hmm. in this economy? So that's how I managed to actually write the book after being, being inspired by one of the foreign authors who actually said everyone has got a story to write so i said to myself i think i was a vendor so let me write a book wow yeah. all right interesting how has your environment and upbringing color your writing yeah um thank you so much for that question like uh, i think what i've narrated in my book mm -hmm. to say i was brought in in a family which is a bit tough my father was a soldier and a uh, veteran he was strict in terms of time, in terms of uh, productivity, in terms of everything. So, and also being born and bred in Watsomba, mm -hmm. uh, Kwamkoma Justice, you know, when you're staying in the rural areas, things are a bit tough, uh, things are, you're walking maybe seven, eight, nine, ten kilometers to school. I, and I was also asthmatic. Mm -hmm. So, my, that's how I actually managed to, I managed to, I didn't know that maybe God was actually creating a story in me. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's actually what made me tough. It made me build a character. Mm -hmm. And also being a firstborn, you know, know that I'm the, I'm the one who is responsible. Mm -hmm. You know, our parents usually, you know, my mother, father, mm -hmm. our, our, our parents, they usually say, you know, I think you are my father, you are going to be the father in the future. Yes. So we are debit parent, parents as firstborn. So that's what actually made me also uh, behave in a tough manner mm -hmm. or uh, actually uh, I, I, I was guided by my, my, my situation. Wow. Yeah. All right. Let's go back to your days as a teenager. Uh -huh. I understand you were asthmatic. Yes. And you were not allowed to participate in sports. Exactly. So you were a very good sportsman. Exactly. How did that affect you and how did you end up getting asthma? Yeah, you know, like what I wrote, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's very difficult. You are in a school which has got, um, uh, you're young, uh, grade one, grade two. Then uh, your headmaster is actually saying, no, this guy is asthmatic. He's not allowed to participate in general work. Mm -hmm. Not to participate for any general work, it was an advantage. Mm -hmm. Sipping the class, I was exempted from doing that. Mm -hmm. Do all this general work, I was exempted. But when it comes to sports now, I wasn't allowed to play sports and it was a big disadvantage because I was a good sportsman. Like I was a good, uh, I was a good, I used to play soccer, I used to play handball. I, I believe that even up to now, it doesn't take, it doesn't take me time to master any sports. Like when I even joined golf, within a few days, I would actually master how to play that sports. So I can say, I think naturally I'm a born a sportsman. So it affected my self-confidence, you know, you're meeting these other young people. Uh, you know, sports actually unites people. So people, young people are playing soccer, young people are playing bas basketball, young people are playing volleyball, and Jerry was supposed to be just be a spectator. And to me, that actually destroyed my character. It destroyed my self-being. I wasn't confident. I was quite confident when I was in class. When I'm not out of the class, you know, sometimes a kid will actually say, even when you want to debate, mm -hmm. even when you want to challenge them, then they'll say, shut up, you're a sick guy, I'll actually blast you, you're a sick person, I'll kick you, I'll kick you. You see, some, so those things, they made me lose confidence. Yeah. yeah. That's very true. Okay, let's talk about MNJ. Uh -huh. All right. I'm going to say MNJ is like a tree because yeah. it has got like five branches. Exactly. Because we have MNJ Media, uh -huh. MNJ HR, uh -huh. SEPA, the Chartered Vendor, MNJ Consultants. Uh -huh. And I'm going to call it a tree. Why? Because mm. I know soon we'll be, another branch will be growing on the tree. Yeah. So uh, in your book, you wrote that uh, your vision is to employ at least 500 employees. Mm. Tell us about that vision. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, thank you so much. Uh, that vision, 
I noticed that uh, our country, Zimbabwe, is currently in a difficult uh, circumstances whereby our economy is not performing. And one of the things which is actually affecting our economy is the high unemployment rate. So I say to myself, instead of blaming my government, instead of blaming other people, how can I also take charge and uh, provide employment to young people? So currently we are saying, no, we're employing over 60, but we have got uh, the potential to employ over 500 people. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what it actually drives me to say, no, I think we need to provide employment to people. And to me, money doesn't satisfy me, but giving other young person an opportunity to actually build their career, it satisfies me more. Mm -hmm. So providing employment to me is actually bigger than earning a millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. So giving employment to 500 people, I think actually I, will, I would have achieved a, what I would call success, mm -hmm. according to me, than getting a lot of money. Because if I provide employment for 500 families, for 500 people, it means 500 families are going to benefit. Probably we are saying even over 2,000 people are also going to benefit. By the way, we also have a, our company called MNJ HR. Mm -hmm. The reason why we've got that company also is for us to employ more than 15,000 people indirectly. Because we are going to employ people then we, for, on behalf of our clients, which is also employment on its own. So that, has, that is actually drives me and I'm hopeful that even God is going to give me a chance to achieve mm -hmm. this, uh, uh, this, uh, these goals. Amen. Yeah. That's very true. So Mr. Jerry, when you're growing up, you used to play money games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And in your book, you said that you would have sleepless <laughs> nights if your team loses. So there's a statement I like in your book. Uh, it seems that um, losing is part of the game. Exactly. Yes. So there are people in business, when they lose, they quit. What advice would you give to those people? <laughs> okay, thank you so much for that question. Mm -hmm. So when you say it about money game, uh, maybe I'll first, before I answer your question, is, uh, uh, you know, when I was growing up, uh, I was always a fighter. Maybe I took that from my father, who was also a fighter in the liberation of the struggle. So when I got that, I, 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 I just, I'm just a fighter. Mm -hmm. Because when I was young, at school, if I was not in the top three, mm -hmm. sometimes I would I would be disappointed for, for, for days or for, for, for months just because I wasn't in the top three. And even when I was beaten by another kid in terms of school, it used to disappoint me. So even when you're playing sports, social sports, you lose. Ah, I used to take it to heart. Then later on now when I started reading these books, that's when I used to notice that, no, okay, losing is, is part of the game. You lose some, you win some. And... Um, I think I got it from a guy called Dunlock. He was actually, he's got a, an acronym. He's used in cells, which is called SW squared. A, SW cubed, I mean. So it's some will, some won't. So what? So when I started developing that attitude now, it made me a bit strong. Wow. So coming to your question, whereby you're saying uh, other entrepreneurs, they come into business. You know what? When you're an, still an employee, you believe that uh, I, I hate my nine, nine, nine to five or eight to five job. I need my own company because uh, people, they think that when you're an entrepreneur, you're going to have a lot of free time. It will be vacation after vacation. But boom, when you start uh, in, uh, entrepreneurship, you're going to notice that 24 seven, you'll be at work. And like most of the people they think no if i start my company today very soon i'll be driving a gl <laughs> very soon i'll be driving a gd6 <laughs> but boom mm -hmm. you notice that you cannot even afford to buy a vids mm -hmm. you notice that you cannot even not even buy buy your house mm -hmm. you can't even buy a stand mm -hmm. so that actually gives people too much pressure because mm -hmm. what you're expecting and what is being provided by entrepreneurs entrepreneurship is two different goals yeah. All right. All right. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. We'll be taking a short break. See you after.
last year with each other Vende. Okay, sir. So, we were talking about the money games. Yeah. All right. So, tell me more. Because when it comes to money, <laughs> let's play with money. <laughs> yes. You know, uh, it's, too, it's, it's so funny. My mm -hmm. mother used to beat me because of these money games. Because <laughs> no. sometimes, you know when you're young, you're not even making any money. Okay. And you'd steal those coins. By that time, we used to have uh, those 10 cents coins. Your one cent coin, there used to be, a, 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 they used to have a lot of value. Oh, so if yeah. you take five cents, steal from your mother, man was still, <laughs> I think uh, by that time, I agree with the people who says maybe the 90s were better than the 2000s. Mm -hmm. Because why? Mm -hmm. Our mothers used to keep a lot of coins and they wouldn't give a damn if you take those coins. But sometimes they'll start seeing that mm, something is happening here. This guy is taking a lot from me. So yes, we'd go for those money games you play. You lose, we wish to also win. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you win, you're happy. When you lose, you're sad. Yeah. Oh, wow. So you were a naughty child. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I oh, was a oh, naughty child. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. That's fine. So tell us more about the quitting part. We yeah, have the quitting part is uh, what I just want to tell or to, to, to advise an entrepreneur who is out there is uh, in, in entrepreneurship, uh, you need to know. You need to just understand that this thing is tough. It's not easy, like what most people say. I think there's a problem of uh, having a lot of motivational speakers saying, quit your job, start being an entrepreneur. I always say to the people who work maybe in other organization to say, start being an entrepreneur whilst you're still working for someone. If your mindset is twisted or if your mindset is geared up to say, I need to take full responsibility. If this task is not finished, I'm supposed maybe to 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 to, to work uh, all night trying to finish that task. That's an entrepreneurship mindset. Was an employee what they do now is exactly they'll they'll come at work maybe one minute to eight, exactly one minute to five or one past to five. They're disappearing. Yes. But now when you're owning your own company, now when you're a shareholder or a director or a manager somewhere. You need to take full responsibility. Oh. So, like what they say, charity begins at home. Start when you are still an employee. Mm -hmm. I think it will be easy for you. Then those who are already in entrepreneurship, I will tell you that it's difficult everywhere. Be it in America, be it in UK, be it in Zimbabwe, be it in South Africa. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurship is entrepreneurship. Yes. Remember, rentals are on you. Yeah, yeah. Everything which is going to happen, bad or good, it's, it's all on you. So the responsibility is just too big. The number, the more people you have, the bigger the responsibility. The more value your, your invoice is also, the bigger the responsibility and the bigger the risk is. So what I just want to say to people is every day, whether if you feel like you don't want to go to work, just go there, show up, something good will happen. Wow. Yeah. Uh, the, I hope the viewers are taking notes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about some weird and I. Wow. <laughs> and you were not allowed to bring a girlfriend. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but tell us about the valuable uh, life and business lessons that you were taught by Ambuya Tendai. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some of the people, maybe, well, our first goal, maybe what Ambuya Tendai actually told me to do. Ambuya mm -hmm. Tendai said, no, I couldn't bring a, a, a girlfriend at uh, where I was living. I was supposed to water the garden at 2 a.m. And um, I was, she wouldn't also allow me to get the vegetables for free. And she also taught me that 1900 hours every day we are supposed to pray, mm -hmm. uh, have a Bible study, pray. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. uh, she also taught me that uh, I must clean a, a, a dining and I was also supposed to clean a toilet. So to an, to an ordinary person mm -hmm. and to me when it was happening to me that time, I thought that maybe this lady is tough. I think yes. maybe she's a bit evil, it's a bit tough to me because I'm, I'm just a... a, a someone is renting at a premise but later on now i realized that no this is a valuable lesson number one like if I, if they said if she's she's actually protected me because i was coming from the rural areas imagine oh. you're coming into harare that's when she said no i don't want any girl here because these harare girls can mislead you <laughs> and for sure let me protect this one let Tomba me protect guy. <laughs> guy and uh, she was right mm -hmm. because she protected me and um for all that time i was actually on at a place and even afterwards i learned valuable lessons from here and also when we used to water garden 2 a.m wake up every every day 
it gave me that kind of uh, a, a, you know we now have that kind of uh, energy and when you wake up early you start your day early up to now i set my day early i learned that from ambia tenai so it was a lesson on its own when she used to say no ah iwe mzukuru I, I am uh, you are the young one please water the garden for me mm-hmm. to it was tough by then but i see it is a valuable lesson which i'm still using up to date wow. then on the issue of praying uh i learned that no in everything which i do i have to put god first yeah. and in everything which everyone does it said because we are doing it like or everything which we did writing a book it becomes viral viral post posting something on tiktok it becomes viral sometimes it's because uh it's it's god who is actually doing it on our behalf so she she taught me a valuable lesson for me to be disciplined and usually when you fear god most of the times there's uh there are few sins which can happen if you fear god then she also said i'm supposed to clean the dining <laughs> even uh, cleaning the toilet mm-hmm. up to date i think you know better yes uh when my office is not cleaned yes then when someone is supposed to clean my office when they also feel maybe they are occupied with doing something else you know that i can clean my office on my own up to date why because there are valuable lessons which i also learned from ambia tendai so wherever she is may her dear soul rest in peace yeah Wow. Wow. That's so interesting. The cleaning part. Yeah, I can testify. <laughs> okay. You, do you do you clean? Can you do you clean a toilet? Yeah, I do. What about the dining? I clean. I love cleaning. Like yeah. it's my favorite thing to do. And what time do you wake up? 5 a.m. Cuz I'm supposed to be at work by 7:30. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you should try 2 a.m. Yeah, I'll try. Okay. I can't promise though. <laughs> I can't promise. Yeah, yeah. 2 a.m. is too much for me. All right. Let's talk about Amai Guru. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Amai Guru. Let's talk about Amai Guru. You know, we can't close this show with, uh, without talking about Amai Guru. We need to talk about her. Okay. All right. Okay. So let me tell you, when I was reading the book and then I read that part, yeah. I was like, mm, I can relate the story to the story of Joseph and Potiphar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So we just want to know how you ended up um you know not mixing business with pleasure uh, because i understand you were her mess teacher uh, right uh, and at some point she had hidden agendas like she had romantic plans for you mm, yes okay. so how did you end up overcoming that and okay. what advice would you give to those entrepreneurs that are actually mixing that too <laughs> okay so what happened with my guru i i i i actually had a crush with this young sister Oh. So she came to Arare and I said no I think uh, this girl is good so I started interacting with her uh, the first day then the second day I think the third day she just disappeared she was sent back to the rural areas by her sister and I never saw her again that's when I started asking my guru where is that uh, young lady my guru where is that like, young lady where did you put that's, my person that's how we started interacting uh, and uh, She used to come to my 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 you know those payphones that was the time of payphones she used to come uh, spend a lot of minutes 5 minutes 10 minutes calling her husband calling her mother it is almost on a daily basis i would know that no i would a large chunk of money coming from my guru and uh, even her husband uh, he trusted me because he would say you actually say no the only guy i know who actually interacts with my wife with is, my wife Jerry. is Jerry. then Ah uh, she started buying fish for me she started buying meat for me uh, I was more like family now wow. so but did you didn't know that maybe she's got a, a bit of a hidden agenda like what you said started uh teaching mathematics etc mm-hmm. then yes uh the issue of mixing uh, pleasure and work is happening a lot and it has destroyed a number of organizations including some of the organizations I've once worked for mm-hmm. because the thing is uh Uh, you cannot actually even one of my my mentors uh, Philip Materen you guys said Jerry never mix uh, uh, don't mix work and uh, romance or, or or pleasure because why it's because it 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 you know when you're you're, you're trying to chase for money and you are was even people there's office or romance which is happening in a lot of way a lot of workplaces there's a lot of things which are happening 
and you need to be very disciplined for you to actually achieve your goals because there will be a lot of disturbances in this uh, in this route and when you're trying to achieve something big you can be easily hindered because of uh, a following pleasure so what i just want to say to someone who is maybe starting a business today uh, when you employ someone don't take advantage because you are, you are their boss uh, don't take advantage uh, because you are earning maybe more than the person you are, you are working with so it's just a valuable lesson which i learned and uh, up to now i think i'm still using it oh wow thank you so i like it all right thank you so much mr jerry for coming to the show okay welcome Not all right. good. thank you everyone for joining see you next time